Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Most Most Listen To Podcast. Welcome to Film Frauds. I completely bought it in show room where myself, Matt, and my two co-hosts, Mark. Hello. And Tyler. Hello. About a completely unprofessional, 100% biased opinions on the movies of today, tomorrow, and yesteryear. But today, we're talking about a relatively contemporary movie starring Chris Hemsworth as a swole hacker. I'm going to give you a hint as to what the movie's called based on what I'm going to project on the screen. Oh, man. Oh, my God. I was actually considering buying a black hat for this review. Luckily, my Sad dad has a couple, so I was able to do that. <laughs> so, Tyler, uh, what were we talking about today if I hinted and already give it away? So, first off, like we asked in the last episode, um, our little, like, call to action thing is, you know, let us know if you're watching us on, like, a podcast app, rate, let us know what we're doing. I don't know. If you're on YouTube, this review, I'm already, like, preparing for the worst uh, in an assault on my character. Uh, because this What is character? Go- uh, this scene, we're already starting. Uh, but you guys, just like, this is a, this is Black Hat. This is Michael Mann's 2015 movie. And we just want to know what your favorite Michael Mann movie is. And do you think this is an underrated movie? Uh, because, spoiler, I think this is one of the best movies of the decade. Uh, I'm throwing it out right there. Hot take. This movie kicks absolute ass. I love almost every single thing about it. But now, Matt's looking at me like he wants me to die. And Mark looks like he wants to kill me too. So, Mark. We don't really, like, we're not, we're not, we're not angry. We're just... Disappointed. By, um, I'm ready to say something. All right, Mark. Opinion. Mark, what did you? This Mark, is who, so... Mark, who five minutes ago heard this movie is Hacker Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, he said hackers. Not <laughs> unironically, just to yeah. clarify. He's like, hey, just title the movie Hackers or whatever. So, Mark, you just watched this movie. Probably just got done with it about 35 seconds ago. This is my second time seeing it. Matt, this is your first time seeing it. Uh, Mark, what did you think of Black Hat? Well, I want to say two things. Oh no. Uh, one. Um, I don't think there's a single redeemable quality for this movie. Um, <laughs> no, and no, two, no. And two, <laughs> instead of reviewing this movie, I just want to interrogate Tyler because I, I genuinely, I don't understand. Oh my! I don't get it. That was worse. I, than I, I, I have a psychoanalysis relating this movie to Tyler that we can, that we can go, get into later. I, I this genuinely, is, I don't understand what you see. Yeah, so this movie is. Can we, can we say one thing right now? This is going to be an F from you and an F from you and an A from yes. me. Right off the yes. bat. No, right this is probably going to be a D. Like, there's a couple this... things I like. It's, okay. It just barely misses that F, though. Like, so... I maybe if you talk about it more, actually, it might go to an F. Mark might convince me that's an F. Okay. <laughs> First off, just, I just, Matt, I, Matt and I have a letterbox, and every time I watch a movie, I get excited to see Matt's review, because Matt will, I usually get, like, a good indication, and Matt posted this review, and it was one and a half stars, and I'm like, let's fucking do this. I can't wait to debate him. Mark was the wild card, but Mark, we talked a few days ago, and I was yeah. like, Matt's going to hate this movie, and you're going to hate this movie. And yeah. I was right. You guys, I, but I didn't expect you to hate it this much. Zero redeemable quality, seriously. Yes. Okay. I, um, yeah, that's, that's a friendly Mark. <laughs> okay, we have, to go, we have to go right off the bat. What's your least favorite thing about this movie? If you could pinpoint one thing. Mine, mine is the directing. The directing, in my opinion, is atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. I could uh, yeah, not get I into any. I couldn't get into any of the scenes because every shot. I dropped my mic. Every shot is like <laughs> this. It's like it's up close. Man. <laughs> I'm gonna make that the okay. thumbnail now. This is his audition tape for the next Michael no, Mann film. I feel like <laughs> yeah. this is. I feel like this is a good litmus test for Michael Mann movies. So basically, yeah. you're. Okay. I Michael Mann is my favorite director working today. I love almost all of his movies. Public Enemies has some issues, but I still think it has a really bunch of great stuff. This is, if you don't, if you aren't into Michael Mann at all, if you just look at it and you're like, this isn't for me, all of his movies are going to hate. Like, there's, I can't do anything. You either buy into Michael Mann or you're not for Michael Mann. And Black you're either Hat, trying to, trying to desperately dist- distinguish yourself as a film, as a film fan by pretending to like a terrible director or I don't you like, have well, solid thoughts on, on films. Well, hold on. We're going to get, because I have a lot of great stuff about this, but you're either in on Michael Mann or you're not in on Michael Mann, which means... When we do our Michael Mann director series, I'm expecting three straight episodes of you guys just losing. He does your not face. do Michael Mann. I am literally so uninterested in doing this. There's, there's more. There's more Michael Mann films I want to watch. I still haven't seen Heat or he, uh, Collateral. Heat is his. Heat is his magnum opus. It's his best movie. Uh, I personally like Collateral the best, uh, and then it's probably like Collateral, Black Hat, Heat for me. Um, I really like Black Hat, but Mark, Matt, you're just like the directing sucks. So the, immediately you're like Michael Mann isn't my thing. What Michael Mann movies have you seen, Matt, before I ask I've you? I've seen Mark? Public Enemy, which Public Enemies, which I remember. It was a lot, like a long time ago. I was a kid. Yeah. And I remember thinking it was okay. Yeah. Um, I've seen Collateral, and I think Collateral is okay. I don't really particularly like it. I think it's 
it's good until the end. Okay. I think that, like the last like act of the scene is just super lame. Okay. Um, so um, I mean, the- it's like it's like Tom Cruise looks cool in the movie. That's yep. basically what it is, and it's like there's like a cool like they kind of inter- they like have some cool jazz elements to it. Like they talk about like Miles Davis and stuff, which yep. that was cool. But I feel like rewatching it now, now that I despise the directorial style and Black Cat, and it's so overdone and it's so tryhard that um, I think I'd probably not like Collateral more. <laughs> okay, so first I would throw out there. If I were to try to like narrow down my first like my top like five favorite movies of all time, Collateral would be in there. Collateral is one of my favorite movies of all time. I love Collateral. Uh, but Mark, you don't have any experience with Michael Mann. Uh, no, no, no. This is my first film, and you you prepared me for this. You said, you know, basically he has like a he has his own style. Yeah. And it's like you're in or you're out. And so, uh, I acclimated <laughs> to the directing style quickly. I was like, okay, this is the way it's going to be. This is his style. I'll deal with it. Uh, Obviously, it's not my taste now that I've watched Black Cat. Um, (laughs) I watched this on Amazon Prime, and I don't know if they have a bad copy of it of it or something because I felt like the audio, like that audio, that audio, oh, no. audio was. I was like, I'm. Uh, this is like this this must, have, this must have been like what Tyler felt like during Nosferatu the Vampire because I was like, what the the dialogue wasn't matching the face and it's all sounded like half of the dialogue seemed dubbed and there was, I just thought it was there badly was, I, I, edited. There was okay, so there was one time where I was like. They dubbed the audio, and there's a scene where Chris Hemsworth. I thought there was one time. It was like where, at least ten. No, there was one where Chris Hemsworth is facing Viola Davis, and you just see the back of his head in Viola Davis's character. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't think his lips are moving. I, I think like, Chris Hemsworth's like first line is audio dubbed. I don't. Know, <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so I just I'm very curious now. So Matt, you like the movie started and you're checked out immediately. So no, it. When did you guys it, check out? Like that's I what I'm really checked curious out, about. Um, I'll just put it this way. I checked, I looked at the clock at one point, I realized I was halfway through the movie and I groaned. Like, I was so <laughs> sad that I was only halfway through the movie. Okay. Um, I, like, I couldn't, I can't even explain how, like, how sorrowful I felt. I was like, damn, this is my whole night. I could have watched something so much better than this or played a video game so much better than this. And I was like, I just, sat, anything. I just, I was literally, there was a fight scene going on at one point. I was staring at my black screen on my phone, completely uninterested. <laughs> What was going on actually on the screen? Okay, um, there's only like two and then, fights. You know, I'm not trying to say that like the directing is something you can overcome um, if the movie has good dialogue and good characters, which this movie does not have any of those as well. I completely um, disagree. So I mean, you I mean you could just say like, oh, you just like I said, the directing. Well, that's not true. I mean, the writing was also atrocious, and I mean. Chris Hemsworth kind of has a character, but other than that, no one has any character at all. Mark, when Other did you? I'm a bad guy. Be, before, before, because I've just been giving like base, like I love this movie. I, I'll get to like more specifics, but I'm just curious, Mark. When did were you like I'm done? You're like this is no, I'm out. Like, is there I a think, point, or I is mean, it just like? I was like really going into this like uh, I was like ready to be like pleasantly surprised. I love I love like hacker type movies. Like I obviously love Mr. Robot. I love seeing this stuff. <laughs> Um, Did this movie feel like think, Babysitter's Mr. Robot to you? Okay, I actually, so I actually looked this up. Well, Mr. Robot premiered six months after this movie came out. So yeah, but actually, the show has gone on for like four, five more years after. Yeah, but this that's a giant Hollywood movie that was in production before Mr. Robot. So actually, Mr. Robot probably well, from Black Hat. Think about that. What do you think about I, that? Well, Matt? actually, that. <laughs> well, I I don't don't think that's the case. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, My, as two people have seen Mr. Robot, we thoroughly disagree. <laughs> I, I I think well the script is one one aspect that I just absolutely abhorred, but like just talking about the script for a second. Um, <laughs> Man, Mark, I was um, kinda hoping you'd show up and be like it's not I've never bad. Seen Mark so passionate <laughs> about a movie. <laughs> okay. Mark was looking at I new vocab words to describe this movie. I like being dramatic, but like this is a little. What I'm about to say is a, is a, might be a too dramatic even for myself. This may be one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Oh, probably one of the worst. Oh my god! I, I genuinely, my... I, I don't understand. I didn't care for it. The movie, the movie literally felt four hours long. I did not. I, I thought it was like five p.m. when it finished. Mark, you were um, my, you were my hopefulness. I knew. I'm gonna excuse myself from this chat because clearly I don't need to do any work. Here. Oh my god! So, okay. I, I don't. 
I've j Tyler, please make me understand. I want to know what I'm not seeing. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is—I had no idea this was gonna be the Tyler cast about what defending <laughs> defending Black Hat. I love this movie. Something that really clicked with me last night for this movie, and this is gonna sound so stupid. I'm gonna dig myself into a hole. And I'm ready for it. Is how kind of like uncinematic un this movie felt. And I really, really yeah. <laughs> had to appreciate that in some capacity because this is a 70-year-old director taking probably the most modern movie that's come out since 2015. Like, if you think about this, the, the spoiler alert for Black Cat, no one has fucking seen this movie. This movie on a $70 million budget grossed $19 million worldwide. It was one of the biggest bombs of 2015. It currently sits at a 32% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes with 188 reviews, which doesn't really mean anything, but that kind of gives you a sense. A 24% on Rotten Tomatoes with 200, tw sorry, 20,000 reviews. Letterboxd has a, a 2.8 average movie score. What was I going with this? I already forgot. What was I, what was I about to say? Oh, it's, so, spoiler alert. No it's one's not seen cinematic, movie, you said. But you like if you think about it really this way, it's, the, it's a 70-year-old man making the most modern movie ever where it's not the bad guy's main plan. Is it, what? How's the most modern movie ever? It's not the most, bo okay. It's like, think about this. Way. It's just generic bad guys from. No, South it's not America. a generic bad guy. It's a realistic <laughs> bad guy. This bad guy is not trying to like get the nuclear codes to blow up the world. He's a guy who wants to sell tin ore to make a ton of money. That's our bad guy. He's just like some fat schlub from like, he's just like, hey, I'm a hacker. It's just, it's just the most normal guy ever. And I kind of love that. I kind of risking war with China and the US. So it's not like it's not grand scale. He's not risking war. With, there's no conflict between China and the US in this movie. Isn't it messing with trade deals or something between no. them? No. It's just kind of, it's just like the, he, he's, he just, he's just he, killing people for He's money. just like, he's, he, well, at the start of the movie, we should, the movie starts off with a nuclear kind of like reactor exploding in China. It doesn't cause a ton of damage, but you find out it's because the guy was testing to blow up the pumps to blow, to at the end of the movie, flood a river dam to skyrocket the price of tin ore so he can cash out and everything like that. Like his second big action is to raise the price of soy. This is the least cinematic movie ever. And you're like, oh my God, there's no characters and stuff like that. What I love about this movie is you're just kind of like dropped into an established world. Like these people meet and they have backstories and you kind of feel the sense that there's a history and, a, and like, a, a care, like a sense of- Is that every movie? movie? Yeah, is that every movie you're no, just dropped this, into a world? No, because usually if you're being established as characters for the first time in this world- Well, it's not world, true because you have the Chris Hemsworth back, back you, have the, you have the the generic Chris Hemsworth describes his his um backstory to love interest who has no character either no scene. he doesn't so it's okay. not like there's not like he, there's he, dropping you in you have to it's not like miss Timothy mr vengeance where they're literally dropping you into this plot and you have to figure out everything they aren't own. dropping you into this plot the movie starts with a nuclear you said they're reactor. dropping you in the middle of this world but the thing is though you can feel for me i was 100 percent in on the characters and i feel like there's an established camaraderie that they do a really good job of whether that's kind of like just them just like glitz so this okay this is a okay. They're roommates at MIT. Is that is that warranting of an, of an A? <laughs> yes. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, they, they they want to sell tin. A. This Brilliant. is this movie is. <laughs> I like it, to think it, that that Tyler thinks this movie has better social commentary than Parasite. <laughs> oh my god. I just want no. Uh, no, I he don't. He would think say that. He would say it. You know, it has better social commentary than Parasite. Uh, no, I just want to throw this out there right now that this is the most Michael Manny movie that Michael Mann has ever made. Maybe in competition with uh, Miami Vice, but this is basically like. All of Michael Mann's... Michael should be banned from theaters. Well, no one saw this movie, so it was, it, was, that, I it was at a theater. So this is, it's all of the, I, I am fully in on Michael Mann. Like I am, I, I love his stuff. I love the way he writes characters. I love the way he kind of like does this kind of stuff. I love his handheld kind of style. We're in on the characters, you're in on the face. And this is all of it combined. And I was so all for it. I think the relationship is good. I think there's a few like, Let's let's okay. We what should. Is, what is love? What is love interest character? She is the she is the sister of. She's cool. She's cool. <laughs> that doesn't describe what her relationship is. Her emotions. Her emotions is she's independent because she she willingly cool. tries to follow she's Chris rough. Hemsworth when Chris Hemsworth becomes a fugitive. <laughs> there's like this Michael Mann does this as all female characters like where there's this like oh my god. First off, I just want to throw this out there. People don't buy Chris Hemsworth as like a super jacked hacker. I don't think those people have like ever like you can work out for like two hours a day and then do hacking stuff for the next like 12. It's possible to be Chris Hemsworth and be a genius MIT hacker. 
You just have to go to the they gym. They kind of established just, that he just he look at Dolph Lundgren, except he's a chemical engineer. Yeah, so. but, but I was like, I watched Chris Stuckman's review of this after, and he's like, "What? Does this guy just work out eight hours a day?" It's like Chris Stuckman, you've clearly never worked out. You don't need to go oh to the gym for God. eight hours. Go to the gym for two hours. Be super jacked. Eat well, and then you could look like Chris Hemsworth. They actually do establish that he probably likes to work out because as soon as like he's alone again, he starts doing push-ups. <laughs> yeah. So like, they, do, they do a decent job. He does like the push-ups on the wall. But, yeah. Like I don't know what that's targeting, Chris Hemsworth. Um, <laughs> I'm like, what Chris Hunter was because Hunter was like, man, Michael Mann's never worked out before. He's reading the script. <laughs> it's like, oh, Walls, but no, I, I, I was in on Chris Hemsworth character as this kind of like genius MIT hacker who's kind of like this jack of all trades who can fight slightly. And people, I was looking at Chris and was like, how does he know how to fight? He just like hits people with chairs and a table. In that one hand to hand combat scene, he dodges like knives and then he hits people with tables and chairs. He doesn't really throw any punches or do anything until the end where he stabs someone. And then, like, step, step, step. He's not, like, this trained fighter. He just, like, has some experience. Like, Mark, you probably know you do boxing. As soon as you have a little bit of training, you're already leg up on someone who has nothing. He's in yeah. jail. He, yeah, he's he has a, the, fu- the fundamentals. Yeah, he's an established character who has established motivations and an established backstory. So when you're please plopped into this world, you buy him as, like, this hacker savant. Like, established, like, but it's not compelling. I think it's compelling. I this is like my type of movie too. A movie that's like it's just compelling movie? packing movie. Yes. No, it's not a bad movie in any regard. I don't know. Like the fact that you mark that there's zero. Like you didn't you watch this and you're just like nothing. I can't I can't I literally I can't think of anything. I, and I'm not trying to be like I'm to play it for the camera. What do you think I about what do you think about like, like the action scenes in this movie? I, like the scene where I think they were probably the worst parts. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is probably one of the you? worst parts. I like did a, the, oh, sorry. No, you like, this is like, it's, it felt like a, sort of like, uh, in, you know, Rogue, at, at the end of Rogue One, it's like Darth Vader, and it makes you think that the movie's good because it ends on such a high note. Like, that's what these scenes felt like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Mark's coming for everyone today. Holy I mean, it, it's, it, it just is like, I'm not going to let this distract me from the fact that this is a bad movie. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, you're, like, so he's at, you're at uh, the Mark end. learned from Rogue One when he left the theater going, you just see a dark thing when... <laughs> he's, Mark, I'm so I, proud I, of you. That's exactly what I did. You're so <laughs> grown up. You're so mature now. No, <laughs> Michael Mann is known for having these realistic action fights. But Matt, you're like, why is the movie so loud when the gunfight? Realistic? Ever... No one reacts to, in the, in the final fight, no one reacts to Chris Evans when he shoots that guy in the head. Everyone runs away. Not the first three people he kills. Because everyone's focused, he stabs them. You can't really figure that out. And as soon as you're guns watching, start going. If you're walking down the street and you see someone get stabbed, you're going to notice it. it. But people, I mean, he look who cut Jack Chris Hemsworth is. Are you going to be like, hey, don't stab him? Little but short person. But they're still walking like the ceremony is normal. He stabs like three people. And then the guns are coming gun, up. Out in the you, middle of the open. People are, are you paying attention to everyone one when you inch walk away on the street? From his shoulders. Are you paying and they attention don't to everyone when you walk on the street? It's completely unrealistic and shut your mouth and stop pretending like it's realistic. No, it is realistic because you do you notice every single thing someone does when you walk down the street. No, you're focused on your own thing. They're in a choreographed ceremony. When the people who are not wearing ceremony. red gowns are stabbing each other, I'm going to notice. No, you are because they're in a choreographed ceremony that they've never been practicing. They're, doing, they're in a choreographed ceremony and the people who are not doing the choreographed ceremony are going to stand out because they're breaking away from what everyone else is doing. But they're they, probably focused on their task. Of people who stand up both physically and what they're wearing. Okay, we're, we're getting... I, okay, hold on, hold on. Getting, hold on. I, think if, I think if we're gonna if we're gonna nitpick a scene, we're picking the wrong scene. Okay. okay, okay I don't. Okay. I know we talk about objectivity and like, oh, this doesn't make sense. There was actually a point in this movie where I was like, this is the. I don't know anything about tactical maneuvers, but this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. All right, what is it? And it's when the RPG blows up the car, yeah. and then Chris Hemsworth's hiding, and then the FBI, like the U.S. Marshal and Viola <laughs> Davis, come, and they drive in front of the shooters, and then they get out of the car, and then they just get shot and die. I mean, does that They're make not sense? Trained. The one guy who is the actual trained person was not trained. You don't need to be trained. I, I feel like you don't need to be trained to know that. Why, oh, I. Sh- he's not a trained combatant, though. Oh, and so he, when if someone's shooting a gun, if someone's shooting a gun, you go, "Oh, we'll walk right in the middle of a line of fire." Yeah, it's, That's it's what I mean. Is that, is that your first reaction? But you just there? saw that one guy with, who was like the guy from freaking Mindhunters and uh, Justice League first scene with Batman. Um, he like he's like slows down. He gets like the cod like sniper breath. He goes Shh, and then picks off like four people and they get shot and dies. That's they're why he likes it. It's like Call of Duty. <laughs> no, you, I'm surprised you didn't like that because that's all you run into the line of fire. This movie, I think, has great action scenes. This will go out there. It has objectively terrible action scenes. But no, we can't. We can't do object- We did an entire video on why things are objective. All right, Mark. All right, Mark. Let's vote. Does, it have, does Black have objectively bad? Um, <laughs> 
but I can sing. Say I. 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 I okay. Wait, yes. crap. <laughs> <laughs> wait, okay. Democracy. What do you guys think of like the themes of this movie? What? What do you guys themes? think of the themes? There was yeah. themes. Were there themes? Yes. <laughs> it's like it was like a glowing indictment of like capitalism. Money controls every. It's like this. Okay. It's like the most base level capitalism is bad. No, it's not. <laughs> it's there's, like, there's nothing. There's it, nothing more interesting to me about a movie that's entirely digital that ends with like an analog fight at the end between guns, where people. It's a fight over money because Chris Hemsworth stole seventy four million dollars of the guy's money, and people are just being like brutally gunned down in that ceremony, like just kind of like nonchalantly in favor of getting back money. It's just like it's a wonderful like indictment of capitalism. And, like, I how think I don't care. One I think I think it's just money I causes it's, violence. I don't even think it's just about capitalism. I think, and I'm all for that kind of like those movies, but like this just is like, oh, it's a movie about greed. People are greedy. What's new? It's not people, but it's not. No, it's not in any regard. Yes. If you think about it's like literally what, what any do you think spy the, movie what do you ever. Think any James Bond movie. Shot. Casino Royale did it way back. <laughs> okay, so this is clearly a very unorganized review. The bad guy <laughs> is indifferent and he wants money. The bad guy wants money. No, it's, it's further people doing that. The final shot of the movie. Lives for money. The final shot of the movie is them. First off, Michael Mann has this really interesting kind of like mentality where he focuses on kind of like cogs in a machine while there's like growing movements behind. If you look at like Public Enemies, um, Johnny Depp characters and Christian Bale characters are in like a very like uh, hands-on cat and mouse kind of game while you know while the real kind of like criminals are the the banks in the background and the fbi surveillance era is being set up and these two johnny depp and christian bale feel very antiquated and very unimportant to the larger scale things that are happening and i think that's what's really kind of going on here and it's kind of like he does this in all of his movies where like miami vice is like that where it's like again this very like cat and mouse kind of thing while you have this era of surveillance kind of building up behind and Michael and Black Hat is exactly that. You have these like very like you know you get like the cool Black Widow thing going on. You guys are just looking at me like I'm an idiot. I just I just read a letterbox review that broke my brain. <laughs> what is it? Uh, sorry, it's this this person gave it five stars and said yeah. Ready Player One except good, bizarrely masculine gamer film made by a man in his seventies when probably only played Pong or Call of Duty and takes his supposedly <laughs> silly plots very seriously. How is this? I don't, I don't, I don't get this movie. What are people seeing in this? Okay, we need. I need to get you well, guys. That, like, that's, like, that's like one one star, five star review amongst like a sea of probably half a star reviews. No, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of people who are like Tyler, like very dedicated to this. This Michael, oh. I'm telling you, Michael Mann has like a cult of followers. If you thought like the Christopher Nolan, like the kind of like fanboy fan base, where like he can't do any raw, you haven't like dived into Michael Mann fan base. There is such a support for this director, and I'm all in on it. Looks him. like. I don't even know what he looks like. I'm going to look him up. He's Michael Mann. This is such an unorganized review because I honestly expected at least a little... Matt, what did you like about this movie? I liked it when it ended. Oh, my God. What did you actually like about this movie? You said you gave it one and a half. What was that half star from? It reminded me of how good Mr. Robot is. <laughs> oh, my God. And and what, what, <laughs> what did you actually like about this movie? There's no, there's no fake CGI scene where, where like, the, the white lines of the hacker, hacker uh, grip are going down to the circuit board and taking it over. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it felt like, it felt like uh, the first, like, 20 minutes was like, oh, Michael Mann has discovered CGI. Yeah, so, Michael Mann has discovered CGI and hacking in the 90s. You guys don't get it. So the, fir- the point of the <laughs> Clearly, scene, I don't. The point of those scenes <laughs> is to show – listen, the – he, the, you zoom in on a computer and it goes right down to the base level and you see I know it, what it does so, <laughs> <laughs> I have eyes <laughs> so the whole point of that scene is to show how little of a thing can cause such a big change he presses like a few buttons and look at that <laughs> little light and look how much of an impact look at the impact of technology it's so great I'm, lo- I'm losing credibility I can feel it I'm, lo- I'm never going to be allowed to pick another movie again am I I think this is like this I, is like I don't um, think at all actually this is like like a six like a sixth grader like like wanted to write a movie and like he he like watched um like one episode of Mr. Robot or like a hacker movie and he's like or like a spy movie he's like he's like and then and then the hacker goes into the computer and it has like white lines and it spreads all over because he's taking over everything he's not taking over it he's sending a piece of information and then and then Chris Hemsworth has big muscles and he punches people on his. <laughs> I I'm Does gonna Chris go ever uses hacking at all in this movie. Yes, he does. What is wrong with you? He hacks all the time <laughs> in this movie. 
<laughs> yeah, all the time. His entire he character. That guy's face with his, with his fist. Yeah. <laughs> he he literally. There's a scene where he gets. He finds out he's being watched, and he goes on the surfer and finds something from Ukraine, and he's like, "I don't know who you are, but I'm on to you." And it gets a line in this movie is called "Piss off and die, Ghost Man." Chris Hemsworth in the movie was like, "What's my nickname gonna be?" And he's like, "Ghost Man." And it's fucking great. I just want to let you know that me and my 13 other fans of Black Hat are going to be very upset when they find this review. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to wow. be there. I am on my side. Something I, tells me that their that their opinions are going to mean very little to me. I, I can't hope franchise believe, mutiny has seen this. Yeah, I, I can't believe. I, I don't hope, get um, like Jeffrey Davidson doesn't roast you. No. Okay. So people with taste like this movie, I'm calling everyone out. This is a good movie. This is one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Every time I watch it, I've seen it twice now, I get more and more into it. This is some, by the way, you can just look up any basic information about this movie and anyone who has had any experience with coding or anything like that says this movie is incredibly accurate. This is very much what this kind of stuff is. So right away, it's not Hollywood eyes. It's very just real. That adds to my uncinematic aspect of it. I love- Where'd you read that? Where'd you read that? You just Google people. Okay, so, okay. So what online told me. They're like, okay. we, got, we got to put the payload in the back door. What? No. What does that even mean? They, you can download. You, they dude, download the hackers a PDF. Always, always call each other ghost man and, they download and, a PDF. and shadow guy. No, the they mainframe? don't. They, oh, I, okay, because you download a PDF. PDF. That's not, people, they people download put a PDF. malware in PDFs. I know that. Yeah, but that's, okay. So, I swear that. This movie, I Oh my I, god, he used a key logger to find his password. Oh my, oh my god. god. That's so cool though. It's what? so awesome. It's, this I, is this is network security 101. I but I find it so interesting. That's what's great about it. This is so realistic of a movie. They find You know what that scene proved? What? It was proved that the NSA is shit at hiring <laughs> their directors because no NSA director would have fallen for that move. Well, he did, and then they got into access into Black Widow. By the way, I loved how like just unlike it's the most dramatic moment of the movie where he's gonna give up his life or do something illegal and it's just kind of like all right you know it hacked in. in this movie <laughs> you i i was i was expecting at least a little bit of maturity from you matt and i i'm disappointed well, I mean, you, 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 i'm not getting much mature, maturity in return you're doing the 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 the, the, the trump argument foul, um <laughs> trump argument um philosophy just bearing down and saying hyper, hyperbolic statements i'm not saying hyperbolic statements what you're saying i'm, I'm trying to provide back the to best it. movie it goes hacking perfectly <laughs> but okay so this movie again you're in on Michael Mann or you're not in on Michael Mann. Michael Mann, I watched like The Insider a few days ago. Matt, you would hate The Insider because half of The Insider is close-up shots of showing their face and showing their reaction. It's super claustrophobic because it's supposed to mirror how the director, how, or sorry, how the actors are supposed to feel the scene. By the way, this is probably the least amount of close-up shots in any Michael Mann movie except for Collateral. The whole movie is close-up shots. No, it's not. About? The the really main, like the only main time when they do that is when they're in the taxi ride and that's when the relationship is starting to build because then you're starting to kind of like get the relationship and like he's looking at her and he's kind of noticing her and then they build and then they fuck and it's great. They have one scene where they talk and he gives his backstory and then immediately they're in the bedroom like, well, this is happening. I know yeah. that they even like each other at all. He's hot. He's cool. He just beat up some people. You're telling like, me you want to sleep with some I was like, did I miss like three scenes? No. You're telling me. <laughs> you're in the deleted scenes? Uh, you're uh, telling Clemson. me Chris Hemsworth is like there. He's this intelligent. He's this hot. He's super hot. And he's super jacked. And he just beat Mark up the guys. Mark looks so guy. disappointed in you right now. This movie is legitimately great. I, I... I'm a big proponent, like I've said before, of movies that feel real. And this movie feels absolutely real. I then watched a movie after this, which we'll get to in our even watching movie section. And that movie looks like shit compared to this. This movie looks amazing. It's this digital kind of style of cinematography that I think just works for the type of movie he's trying to make. Which is, again, this very modernized take on what actual cyber terrorism would look like in 2015. And it's not this, like, he's going to get the, the nuclear codes and blow it up. It's like, no, he's just trying to blow up pubs to increase the price of tin. He jacks soy prices up so he can cash out, so he can make his money. And then he's just some, like, dude. Like, you see him at the beginning, you're like, is that our villain? Like, okay, sure. And then again, at the end, he's just, like, some guy. And I love that about this movie. Stop staring at me. I try. I have a conversation. There's a, there's, with me. there's a little phrase I like to think. I I think perfectly encapsulates this, this episode of looking through, looking in the world through rose-colored glasses. It's not rose-colored I glasses. Think... I just saw the movie. I just, I've seen it twice now. I've seen it more than you guys. 
I've seen more Michael Mann movies than you. I'm better than both. Living of in this denial. Is, is the you know what? No, it's not. And you, Matt, Tar, you, you, your guy always talks about pacing issues. Do you think there's any pacing issues with this movie? No, I freaking I couldn't believe two hours went by. I honestly like I was so into this movie. I have legitimately he has lost like, all credibility. Yeah, you just got it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens? The fact what, that you thought there's only one scene with close-ups in Black Hat just completely destroys any of your credibility. With major close-ups. With what? major close-ups. Okay. What, what so, would you define as a major close-up? What would you define close-up? as major close-ups? <laughs> it's like right this. This is a major close-up. God, it looks so terrible. Why would the okay, camera so ever let, need to be me, that close? Me, oh, we, we need to know what he's thinking? What's his we feelings? Need, okay. they, need, they, need, they need to get inside. Michael Band said they need to learn to be shooting inside his brain in order for the audience to understand what's going on in his head. I'm going to lose I'm gonna lose a little bit more credibility here, but I'm fucking going down with the ship. Take a look at the master in Paul Thomas Anderson. And oh, don't you do not compare, compare Paul Thomas don't, Anderson don't to care. Michael Mann. The pa- Paul Thomas Anderson We're, we're giving you the movie. chance to stop here. No, fuck you. I'm going down Save with the ship. I'm telling you. I don't give a shit anymore. This is This is my episode. I'm going down with the ship. The master Paul Thomas Harrison chooses to focus on the face to capture that emotion, to feel what the characters are going through. And he does that in this movie too. The reason- This is a Paul Thomas Harrison shot, perfectly framed. This is a Michael Mann shot. No, it's not that bad. (laughs) It's not bad at all. This movie, again, I find this, this is like my type of movie. Just like I kind of like, I'll eat up courtroom dramas when they're done well. I'm like, oh my God, that's the best. Like I just watched- Spoiler, I'm not going to actually not I'll hold off onto that in the what we've been watching section. Uh, Mark knows what movie I'm talking about, but it's just my type of movie. A movie that feels very like almost uncinematic, but it still so manages to create that intrigue and keep the pace going and keep things going well. I find this movie so engaging and so kind of compelling in the way in which kind of like it tackles, again, like modern cyber terrorism. It's not like we like we gotta we gotta like track him down or he's gonna blow up the world. Just no, it's just, again, it's just some like dude who's just on a computer who's like pressing a few buttons, and then he like he jacks soy prices up and everyone goes crazy and it's great. And Chris Hemsworth is like a Robin Hood in this movie. He's like I only went after the banks, never the people. It's I feel like great. the story could have. I feel like the. the so what the, would you guys uh, change that, like what, the story wise? Let Mark. I think I think Shut everything up. everything <laughs> besides, like the plot. The plot, is, how would I phrase this? The bad guy, he's not really bad, he's just a different dude. They, that's probably the best aspect of the film. If they had built he's the film right, He's the best com- aspect, that's a redeemable quality. <laughs> just the concept of it. The execution was horrible. No. Okay? I just want to make that clear. This is an the outline, execution was horrible. Look really cool. Ooh, the yeah. outline. If they built a different, like literally anything else around that plot and made it like an hour and a half, it could have been something. Maybe a, maybe a C. Okay? Um, but... I, I maybe I'm just spoiled by Mr. Robot. I'm not sure. Um, and also the fact that I just also this, is your, you like tea, this is your cup of tea. This is your cup of tea, Tyler. This is not. This is not at all my cup of tea. Maybe I just like. I maybe I just like black and white movies and still frames or something. I don't know. But I just. Oh my god. This is <laughs> like again, Matt. When you when we saw the movie uh, when we watched the movie seventy one. And Jack O'Connell is racing do not down. This movie to 71. I'm gonna compare this movie. I can do whatever I want, and you can't stop me because you're. Seventy one has powerful social commentary on a horrible conflict in Northern Ireland. I'm and not this talking movie about is, the... is hackers and muscle muscle man shooting people in the face. I'm Matt, not talking right, no. about the minutia. Tyler, compare this. You can the only movie you can compare this to is the Marine. That's all you get. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of disrespecting the Marine. Don't you think, Mike? A little bit, yeah. Wait, okay, hold on. <laughs> beat by beat, what's a better movie, The Marine or Black Hat? The Marine. Marine. <laughs> oh my, are you, wait, are you guys serious? Yeah. Serious? I had way more fun with The Marine. The Marine at this least like boring. has personality. I can't believe. Mark, you, you, you need more sleep, I think. I think you need more sleep in the Black, 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 Black Hat is like watching, it's like looking at like a dry, like a drywall. Like a, it's just it nothing. Is. It's, it's a scenes happening and there's dialogue and there's extreme close-ups where you can't tell what's going it's on. It's a movie. That's, there's scenes happening and there's dialogue. That's a movie. That's not, you're not describing anything new. But there's no personality to it. It's yes, there to is. Say. Michael Mann's the personality. I'm in the cult of Michael Mann. I, I'm ready. I'm, got, I'm dying for Man, it. You, Michael, Michael Mann worships like... are, are actually more in denial than Christopher Nolan worshippers. You know, really okay, shocking. so I just want to throw this out there. When I make you guys watch Heat and you look at the runtime of Heat and it's 175 minutes, uh... I, I want you guys to physically try to kill me if you don't like it because I'm gonna make you watch a 175 minute movie. I actually want to watch Sheets, so I just like again. I don't. I was expecting a little bit of support, Mark. I'm I'm horribly disappointed. A little bit. Mark is worse. I'm, Mark is worse than me. Yeah, but you I'm, met. You I, haven't provided one good point. 
like as to why you like this movie. You're just like it's stupid. Oh yeah, as to why I like it. What I, do you like about it? I was it? moderately. I kind of liked. <laughs> he's gonna give it an F now. He's already moved down. He's, he's moved the needle down. <laughs> I, I, I now that you mention it, I was literally <laughs> trying to find something good about this movie. <laughs> I can't think of anything. I seriously, like, okay. I can't think of anything. Was there one comp that died in the film? Yeah, when was they're running down the narrow streets. The, when they're running down the streets and the, it's like handheld and it's kind of like, it's super, it's still like, it's a little shaky, but you can still follow everything. It's great. What about the shot when the bad guy's on the roof and he sees the glare in the window and then the next time we see the guys, they're dead on the roof. And you're like, oh shit, how do you do it? Building up the intrigue of that kind of like the, uh, the bag man kind of villain. It's great. What about the shootout where it's realistic? And it's violent, and people die, and it's brutal. People get shot and killed, and it's just like a realistic because there's no like Hollywood sound effects. It's real guns, not actual real guns. They actually killed the actors in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> they went. They went. You were in a Michael Mann movie, Bang Bang. Okay, now you're never gonna be in another movie again. Um, but it's realistic. It's great. It's uncinematic, but that's a positive to it. It works, and the type of movie that Michael Mann is presenting works. This movie's incredible. It's uncinematic, and that doesn't feel like it's a finished movie. Well, it's a finished movie because it came out in the um, and it was good. Matt, what's so, better, this or Black? Uh, this or Man of Steel? Oh, Man of Steel! Are you kidding me? Are you serious? It's literally not even. A, I, <laughs> it's not even close. It's that bad. You Man gave of Steel has some redeeming qualities. Like at Man the of beginning Steel, of this episode, the, you're going like to give the, the, that a swamp little fight in Man of Steel is at least mildly, mildly, mildly compelling. Okay. There's nothing compelling about this movie. At the beginning of this movie, at the beginning of this review, you're like, I'm probably gonna give it a D. What was your justification for giving it a D? Because right now you're like full. It wasn't like it wasn't like insultingly bad. It wasn't like um. It's an intelligent adult thriller. Political well, it's not intelligent, and it's barely a, a. I mean, it's adult in the sense that people get stabbed, I guess. Um, but it wasn't like it didn't make me angry. I was just so ambivalent to what was going on. Are you, do you feel the same, Mark? Is this is this like the coup of film frauds? I feel like Mark was angry watching it. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was really angry uh, <laughs> when the when I I just thought when the movie was done, it kept going, and now it's probably the last forty <laughs> minutes. I was Wait, like, oh my god, they got to go. We both had that moment where like we have we were like I'm only halfway through this movie. I got and really excited. I, I, I was only halfway through. I was like, yeah, I more. resisted the urge to go on my phone. I did not go on my phone at all. This, the urge was strong, okay? But I did not. And I put this on my projector. Now my projector's tainted. <laughs> Just by projecting this movie. Wall, I think. Listen, I guarantee that when I make you guys do this again, because my next recommendation is be Black Hat 2.0, because um, we're going to watch it again. Um, we're going to watch it every <laughs> single one of my recommendations. Out. <laughs> you got Alex on that episode. It's going to be me just yelling into a void. Just like, yeah. black and no one's going to be here. It's going to be reading every positive review for Letterboxd on Letterboxd or Black Cat. No, I've already, read all po- I've already read yeah. all positive reviews about Black Cat. It didn't take long. <laughs> that was a good joke. Uh, wait, so, why, so Tyler, you have no complaints. You have no complaints. You gave me five stars. You have yes. no complaints of it. No. I think this movie is genuinely incredible. If I would have seen this again for twenty uh, best of the decade 2010... I probably let's see where I would have put it. So the master would probably be in there in the top five, like I said. If I were to put this in my list, I'm just gonna go through like the, I don't think it hit the top echelons of it, but it'd probably knock out like Arrival and be like nine or ten of the decade. I love okay, this movie. Okay, Tyler, that you are not making a strong case right now. I seriously, I, I still do not understand. Yeah, like, I, I, I do you, not understand. You've seen a lot of movies. At all. <laughs> You yeah. know what makes a good movie. Yeah. And I'm, I'm genuinely, I am dumbfounded. Okay. I am Let's, dumbfounded. Okay. Again, it's a really hard thing to put because you guys don't watch Michael Mann movies. Okay. That's not true because this movie just so, lacks basic what's, good things of regular movies. You don't need to, what, you can't say that because okay. you haven't seen a Michael Mann movie. That movie's not wait, wait, besides, what? besides, besides like close-up shots and, and all that jazz, what to you defines a Michael Mann movie? What Michael Mann movies are it? usually, again, they're commentaries on kind of like the system as a whole, and you're placing characters as kind of like products of a, a larger system, or I, like I said, cogs in a wheel, like a like small, in uh, like what's the word called, unimportant cogs in a larger wheel. Like I've uh-huh. said in Public Enemies, a lot of that stuff is reflected in here. Like if you think again, like Collateral, Collateral is very much like these giant, like again. It's these giant kind of like over-encompassing like plots. But the movie really boils down to the dynamic between these two people. 
you have in Collateral, you have Tom Cruise's character, Vincent, trying to finish out the night and assassinate these people. Well, you have the larger kind of like political system and the police like coming in to try to figure them out. But in the core of this, while you're having these massive goals trying to be accomplished, you have the relationship between Vincent and Jamie Foxx's character as like the driving force of the plot. And it's ultimately not not the other systems that come down and kind of are like- over the black crime. hat. Oh yeah, that's right, I'm talking about black hat. <laughs> um, and this movie, again, I think it's a really wonderful kind of like indictment of capitalism. I think there's some really interesting stuff here where like, like again, the final shot of this movie is their money slowly dwindling down and they're tense and they're walking through an airport while they're being spied on by the local government. It's a wonderful kind of like trend of like increased surveillance. Well, hey, look, you know, we might have escaped and we're kind of like these, we might have gotten away from like uh, the people who are trying to come after us and stuff like that. But look, we're still being monitored and we're still kind of like slaves to this kind of like money. And as it dwindles down, we have to find out more and what to do and how to get away and how to escape and how to survive. I think this is like a wonderful movie that like focuses on realistic aspects of cyber terrorism in a way that is uncinematic, but still feels like it's cinematic at the same time. You guys look so bored right now. I think yeah. the movie, I think the I see what, I see what you're seeing. I see, I think the and movie is not having that reaction. In my you're not brain. having that, that. That's like, I get it. But again, I don't have any issues with the close up shots. Like you think like the directing doesn't work for you. I'm going to separate it from Michael Mann in this kind of story, in this style and how the movies film. I think it works. Everything's close and everything's personal because again, these characters are cogs in a wheel. We're focusing on these individual people while these larger schemes happen in the background. And again, at the end of the movie, you've been spent this entire time as this digital back and forth as these characters trying to one up each other, you know, um, what the, fuck? The, the main bad guy kind of like has his up. He knows the info. He knows, I forget his name, um, has information. Bad guy, man. A bad yeah. guy, he has his information on kind of like Hathaway and he knows all about him while Hathaway's finding out who he is and finding out that plan. And at the end, you meet in this kind of, again, it's an analog kind of fight. You have guns and you have knives and people are stabbing each other when we just, the entire conflict of the movie has been about like circumventing $74 million and how to use that to try to create more money. And I find it really interesting. I think the close-up shots and the kind of stuff like that work really well. I think the look of the movie, the movie just looks amazing. Like, I think the movie looks incredible. This is Michael Mann's style, though. It's he shoots he shoots cities and he shoots nightlife really, really well. All you guys have to do is watch Miami Vice, and you'll see no, he does he creates like Miami as his own city. And I think he does the same thing with Miami Hong Kong in this movie. City. As his own kind of character, I meant to say. And I think he does the same thing with like Hong Kong in here. I think this movie's really great. I really do. I, I love Hong Kong from the, from the perspective of a guy's, where half the guy's shoulder is also in France. No. <laughs> that was no. the most of Hong Kong I saw in the whole movie. <laughs> You're like, man, that show guy's like shoulder is really... I like how you've seen Hard Boiled, which yeah. perfectly makes Hong Kong feel like a character in the movie. And then this movie does such a worse job. At I, I'm like, because at a certain point, I build up enough, like, experience with movies that the fact that I like this, I can tell is just killing you guys. Because I have good taste in movies somewhat. Somewhat. We're not, like, jealous of you. We're not jealous of you, but it's just, like, it's dumbfounding you guys, and I can see it. Mark just looks like he's so disappointed in me. It's like you're telling me 2 plus 2 equals 5. Like, it's I just like, don't... It's like you, you discovered a new cult, and you're trying to tell us, like, no, man, they have the way into, like, into the stairway to heaven. I saw <laughs> it. <laughs> and they were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> This movie is great. I just I'm gonna. It's actually a it's a it's a pyramid scheme where he's trying to recruit us in, <laughs> yeah. into it because he's someone recruited him somehow. Yeah. How are so the bottom? He hasn't recruited anyone since <laughs> yeah. since he watched it for the first yeah. time. They're getting really um, mad at me. They're just like yeah. like you have to fo- you got to get people in on black hat. Mm. But just out of curiosity, Mark, do you have any hallmark scenes for this <laughs> movie? Because I don't think I have any. I don't. I have. I have. No Hallmark scenes. I have nothing to say about this movie. Oh, <laughs> my. Yeah. Tyler, do you have any Hallmark scenes? Yeah, I do. I have so many, but we're going to just say, I, I personally really like when we're first kind of introduced to the bad guy in, on the computer in the Chinese restaurant um, where he beats up all the guys and he finds like, or sorry, he, he sees the computer because, sorry, I'm, I'm still, I'm like, I'm thinking about the scene. It's really great because you refrain from his perspective and you see him turn around and you see him react, but you don't know what he's reacting to. And the camera follows him and then pans up and you see the camera and you come to that realization like he has like, okay, someone's probably watching him. He goes in the back 
and you see like okay the Sivadvig guy or whatever he has like where you just type like SDVK or whatever. SDSK. Yeah, thank you, Mark. You hacker nerd. Um, <laughs> why aren't you Chris Hemsworth? I mean, I'm just disappointed yeah. now. Um, but when he goes in and he's like pissed off and die, Ghost Man, it's like, oh, this is interesting. Like there was someone watching him, and it's great. I think that scene's probably my favorite of the movie. I love it. I guess I feel like Matt's like texting Mark, ready to throw a coup. No, <laughs> no. I'm just pissing um, out, waiting for the for the next part. All right, well, that's my favorite scene in the movie. Uh, I, agree, I agree, Matt. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your low point? Later. Well, Mark sleepy time. That's actually your low point moment. Where Mark watched the master, fell asleep, woke up, clapped. You guys cannot give the entire movie. I'm banning so it. So my 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 Mark sleepy time moments um start from point zero 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 one seconds in yeah. the film to two hours and thirteen minutes. Fifty nine seconds. In fifty nine seconds, yeah. Mark, what what is your just least favorite scene though? Pick one. Oh my god, I hate <laughs> all of you so much. <laughs> well, God, I really, I just, I, I hated it all. I just, I really, I, I hated it. <laughs> I can't. Believe it doesn't, doesn't feel like you're movie. watching scenes. It feels like you're watching a, a like a, a high school student film. So you can't I, really. It, I think the whole movie is a sleepy time moment because I almost fell asleep at almost every single point within the film. A sleepy time movie? Is this sleepy the first time sleepy time movie? movie? This is the first time, time we've got. Okay, so let's just go straight to grades at this point. I don't have a low F. point. I think it's going to be great. Mind. Mark, you convinced me it's an F. Okay, hold on, <laughs> yes. real quick. Just in case people don't know, because I know you guys already want to be done with this. Uh, it would be great stuff on the You guys don't want A, B, C, D, F, bases, because Tyler said want plus and minuses for no reason at all. You're so rude to me, man. You're so unprofessional. I'm going to fire you. I can't fire you. I'm going to lock you out of all the accounts. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. I'm just not on the, on the zero dollars and zero cents. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to give this movie an A. I really think it's one of the best movies of the decade. So we have the biggest discrepancy, two Fs and an A. This is amazing. This is a historic kind of moment. This is why I wanted to do the movie. I knew you guys would hate this movie. I've been saying it for a while. Oh man, we could have watched Eyes Wide Shut. I know. I was going to say, like, Tyler was the bit between this and Eyes. I could have seen another Kubrick movie. We could watch Kubrick yet. movie on your own time because you lazy bastard. Instead, <laughs> we had to watch this piece of crap. No, it's great. It's a wonderful, wonderful movie, and I'm probably going to watch it again in like a few months. And well, love it. I'm wasting your time. I'm living in denial. Nope, I'll never live in denial. But that was our Black Hat 2015 Michael Mann review, the greatest movie of the decade. Um, I'm just going to cut out all the times you guys talk in this episode so it's just me and you guys nodding in agreement so and then i'll just we never like, nodded once every time you thought he just looks like this <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna edit up he's gonna edit the, the our, our frames in the zoom call so that's just chris hemsworth twice <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's chris hemsworth good and, and michael man. it's yeah. michael man and chris hemsworth there's a scene where he wakes up in the morning and pull it puts his shirt over and he's just jacked i was like nice <laughs> I think I like I think I like extraction more than this movie. Let's do, you like, it, do you guys like extraction extraction more than this movie? I was, about, I was like, wow, the two worst movies I've seen this year Star like Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Maybe there is a correlation here. He's a good actor. Don't Let's go actor. watch Men in Black International. <laughs> <laughs> Make it three worst. He's like pretty yeah. good in that movie that movie where he plays a cult leader. Oh, uh, Bad Times El Royale. Yeah, Bad Times El Royale. It's all right. It's all right. It's a little right. decent. So you guys would much rather watch that. All right, well, we've been watching section where we talk about the movies that we've watched in the past week. Mark, have you watched anything? You've been kind of busy. I've not watched a single movie. Well, I'm sorry. This is the only thing you've got to watch this week. Yep. Uh, are you going to watch anything tonight, Mark? What do you have on the docket? Ooh, I, I think don't know. Mark I, I, like, now. <laughs> yeah, I Mark? think I think I need like a total palate cleanser, and I might watch like a Bergman or a Tarkovsky to remember like what why I actually I love movies, you know? <laughs> because this is like the bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> Mark is gonna quit movies, <laughs> quit film frauds because this fucking thing. Uh, Matt, what did you spend the last week watching? What do you got? I watched uh, Warcraft. Rewatched yeah! Warcraft. Yeah. Best Thanks movie to ever. I finally finally opened Mark's DVD. Got me for my twenty first birthday. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's actually worth getting just for the bloopers. The bloopers are kind of hilarious in, really? in the movie. Really? Yeah. Um, this movie is like surprisingly not bad. Um, yeah. It's really stupid and it's like really into its own lore, <laughs> which I didn't understand. But some of the character arcs are like legitimately interesting. Um, like the 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 orc played by Toby Kebbell. Like you would think that he would make it to the end, but he he loses to the bad guy, which is really interesting. Um, like he gets like he gets slaughtered by him basically. Yeah. And then the king of um, uh, what storm stormhold or whatever it's called like he gets 
Stormwind, yeah, he um he gets murdered by the by the half orc half human lady, so she can become like the clan leader, so that he can end the war between the orcs and the humans. Yep. This is a lot of like interesting arcs that are in the movie that um you can tell like Duncan Jones directed and wrote it that he like really likes. Duncan Jones stuff. directed and wrote this movie. I think so. he definitely directed it. I don't. I'm pretty Whoa. sure he wrote it. Well. He directed it. I He's the no son idea. of David Bowie, right? Yeah. I yeah. had no idea Duncan Jones did this. Whoa. No, he did it. Mm. Sorry, keep going, Matt. That actually and um, surprisingly, like a lot of the visuals are really good. A lot of obviously a lot of CGI, but a lot of it still holds up. And like a lot of like like the orc storylines are actually more compelling than the human storylines. A lot of like their interactions are really well written, and a lot of like the like the animated interactions, like you can tell based on body language, like who's friendly, who's hostile, and like that stuff is really compelling and, and really good. And um, I don't think the movie really did that well in the box office. Suddenly we're getting a sequel, but um, which is too bad because like I really liked. The, where it ends because it feels different from a generic fantasy movie so yeah 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 and it's... i think i remember in that in that film there the setup for the sequel was the baby going down the river like the yeah. obviously yeah. like the biblical thing yeah. um that was i know that character his name is thrall from world of warcraft um and he's a very like in the in the lore he's very very interesting character and i would love to see more of him but i got i don't think it's ever gonna happen yeah, we all saw this in theaters. I remember really liking the set design of that. Is the set design still kind of hold up? Like the costume? Yeah, the CGI looks at the set. Like they, they do a good job of having like these really epic props that fit well with the CGI and stuff. Um, no, it's like, it's legitimately solid. Um, I also watch I it. I watch, watch it now. Yeah, I kind of yeah. want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, you should. Cause like, I think it's, it has some good stuff. To, it has some good stuff in it. I also watch The King with, with oh, um, fuck, Timothy really? Chalamet. Yeah, King's solid. So, yeah, you've seen it? I've seen it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I looks like, I mean, Joel Edgerton, like, he's not in all my favorite stuff, but everything he's in is interesting in one way or another. Like, uh, The Gift is really interesting. It's pretty good. It Comes to Night, I think, is fine, but it's really, you know, compelling I like in it a lot of ways. Yeah, I like um, it comes to and too. he's good in this movie as well. It's, um, also Robert Pattinson plays the Dauphine of um, France. He's in this movie um, for, like, seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. He's in a little more than seven minutes, but he's, like, a smaller character. Surprisingly small, considering that, like, he's such a big actor. But, um, it's like pretty good. Um, just it's just a medieval movie. It doesn't really have like the heart that like a Braveheart has or something like that. But um, it's pretty solid. And so, um, I like I like the story of King Henry V. So um, what made you like, want to watch what, it? What? What made you want to watch it? Because so I watched like Warcraft the night before. You're like, I wouldn't want to watch it for a long king. time. Did you uh, did you buy Timothy Chalamet as a king, like a warrior? He's too thin. He was he, too thin to win too... any of those battles. He's like he's like a twig. It's like you gotta have some muscle. Yeah, uh, I was kinda, that, that, that uh that first fight where he's like the one on one, he should have lost like ten out of ten times. That's kind of like it's kind of compelling though, because like he should like he's like basically about to lose and he gets, he gets like a lucky stab. Yeah. So kind of like that, but then like later on he's like taking out guys left and right in the battle and it makes it kind of lame. But I do like how like. You know, in like in like, a, in like a lesser movie, how like they like a guy would slash a guy with full armor on, and the guy go Ugh, and he die for no reason. Like in this movie, like people have to like like pummel the other knight to the ground, and then so they so they're incapacitated enough to like to get their dagger and like the slit of their um, visor or their gar- gorget or whatever. Like it's more it's it's very good battle scenes in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I have two more movies. I watched The Salvation, um, oh, Salvation. for our Western video we're gonna be doing at some Ooh. point. Um, it's a Do Danish that. Western film yeah. um, with Mads Mikkelsen, um, Eva Green, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Um, it's actually really, like, really, really starts to be cast. And this is a rewatch. I've seen this movie before. And it's just a solid, solid, like, revenge Western movie. I don't have too much in detail because maybe you guys want to watch it for the episode at some point, but it's pretty short. And um, it's cool to see, like, like, a, like, a Danish film company make it because you can tell, um, like, they're very inspired by, like, like old American Westerns. Um, there's a lot of Danish in the movie too. Are you guys still there? You guys got yeah. froze. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, we're and to you. I we're understood compelled. like three words, so I was pretty so proud myself. of you. Um, and then finally, I watched The Town, and man, The Town is a really, really great movie. I forgot how great this movie was. It was on TNT, and I watched it. Um, I just love like it's just a bank heist. It's a heist movie in Boston, and you know Ben Affleck, per like understands obviously he's from Boston, so he understands like the city, and he just does a really great job here. Everyone's seen this movie, I think, so I'm not gonna go too much into it. But I haven't seen really, it. Really? Oh, you haven't seen it? No. Okay, so I won't talk about it that much, and then you'd um, really like it. But yeah, Jeremy Renner especially is really great in it, and it's like really good action scenes. It shows that there's a lot of action movies today try to do the John Wick thing, where it's long takes, and then 
movies, even movies like The Guard, which end up being really, or like Extraction, which end up being really cringeworthy because they don't have the same skill behind the camera or with um, chore- choreographing to like make them as good as the John Wick movies. But um, these movies are fairly, like, there's no like really great long takes in this movie, but um, Ben Affleck is a competent action movie director. And it's like, because you care about the characters basically, but he does a good job with it. And yeah, that's what I've seen. I also started watching The Hobbit last night. I'm what movie? Journey, and I'm gonna finish it today. Hobbit. The, the oh, Hobbit. The, what do you What do you think of like half of it so far? I'm an hour forty in. Um, I got I got HBO How Max. How long is it? Yeah, so here's the thing. I'm gonna go into the, um. So I got HBO Max, and I wanna I wanna watch all the Lord of the Rings movies in order. So like I went to watch The Hobbit last night, and it's two hours and fifty minutes. It says. Jesus. And I'm like two I'm hours thinking, and like, fifty wait, minutes. Two hours and fifty five zero. Yeah. What's yeah. The, what? So, so I'm like thinking, like, did I was this the theatrical length for the movie? Because no, like no. now, now, like nowadays, I have to prepare myself mentally for a two hour and like ten minute movie, <laughs> and I think that I just went into a two, a two hour fifty minute movie with no problem at all. It kind of surprises me. What? The Desolation of Smog, the second Hobbit movie, is three hours and seven minutes. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't remember it being that long. In the I don't theater. remember. Th- neither do I. That can't be the actual length of the movie. It they, says they must the Hobbit. Be, and Max must journey. have like the bonus features and stuff added to it. Because there's no way I would have gone to the movie knowing that it was that long. And yeah, 169 minutes. It says it right here on Letterboxd. Jeez. So that's the remember- thing. So I watch. I watch the first hour 40 tonight. I'm gonna watch the last the last, the last hour tonight, and it's good. Um, Desolation of Smog, real quick, is 161. I don't know what you're looking at. It's not it says. They it put, says three hours and seven seven minutes. Right on that's my, probably the extended cut. But yeah. I, yeah, Matt. So you wanted to watch the Lord of the Rings? Have you you've yeah. seen the Lord of the Rings before? Right? They're like my favorite, like some of my favorite movies. Okay. Um, I've seen, I've seen you know the the original trilogy like hundred like so many so many times. But um, so I'm gonna watch the last hour of The Hobbit tonight. But um, it's good. Um, there's definitely some scenes that are stretched out. Um, but I'm excited to. Like, I remember, I remember liking Unexpected Journey. And then, like, nothing really changes. I still think it's a pretty decent movie. I'm so excited to rewatch Desolation of Smaug. Probably some of it, maybe some of it tonight, and then the rest of it tomorrow night. I'm dreading Battle of Five Armies because that movie's terrible. It's like watching Civ Five <laughs> with the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, you know, I'm excited to go to the, to the actual Lord of the Rings movies as well because those are, you know, masterpieces in my opinion. In most people's opinions, unless you're Tyler. Um, I like Lord, like, of the Rings like Lord of the Rings I hate you. So I knew that was coming. I'm curious though. How is HBO Max as a streaming service? Oh my god, it's so good. Um, so just to clarify, like I didn't buy it on my own. It came with like I bought a new phone and with my serve my provider. Like you just get just give it to you. Um, it has so it has everything on HBO. It has Studio Studio Ghibli. Um, everything on DC. Which I mean, who cares? But it has all <laughs> that. It has like a ton ton of uh, ton of classic movies stuff. Ooh. Um, ton of Kira, Kira Kurosawa, a lot of um, some Bergman, um, Antonioni, too. Fellini, um, and they, um, there's some Bergman on there too. So there's a lot of yeah. a lot of quality stuff there that I'm going to go through. Um, but again, in HBO, like you know, there's a really great shows in HBO, a lot of really great movies as well. Um, it's it seems like it's worth it because um, there's a, there's a heck of a lot to watch. Dang, I'm very I'm, yeah. But I'm a- you, um, I should clarify that I have an LG and I can't buy the app i can't download the app on my lg so i have to buy it on my playstation store so i, I stream it through playstation okay interesting yeah. uh yeah that's actually i'm very excited to see like what the how the desolation of smog holds up on a rewatch because it's been a while since i've seen it and i'm really really liking it i remember i saw in the theaters with cam and um bob and yeah. i remember like during the dragon scene i had to pee so badly like i was <laughs> Like I never been so close to bursting before, but I couldn't leave. And as soon as Bilbo went, "What have we done?" and cut the black, I sprinted. <laughs> You're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I sprinted out of the theater. <laughs> so I I can run through mine quick. I have seven movies. <laughs> I watched so many fucking movies. Oh my um, god! So I somehow I watched Kill Bill Volume One and Two in one night. Um, I somehow had watched Kill Bill three uh, Volume One three times without ever seeing Volume Two. Um, I don't know. If, have you guys seen Kill Bill Volume One and Two? I think Kill Bill Volume 1 is my favorite Tarantino movie. And then 2, I think, I've seen 2 once. Okay, so I might be in agreement. Kill Bill Volume 1, I forgot how incredible it is. It's, Mm -hmm. I've seen this movie now four times, and the fact that it's almost two hours long blows my mind, because I kind of blinked and it was over. And it's just so, it's, everything's been said about it. I don't really need to go into detail about Kill Bill Volume 1. It's incredible. I wasn't the biggest fan of Kill Bill Volume 2. I'm going to be honest. Um, I understand they're going for two different things. One's kind of going for like a Japanese action movie influence. 
and then volume two is going for like a Chinese movie influence. But there's something like that what Tarantino just said. It's just kind of in the style. Like you can if you watch like I mean Chinese revenge movies have you seen? No, like if you watch like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like oh, the, yeah. the action, like you can tell the action is more inspired by that. I, I mean if you think about it. Movie. What? I don't think it's a revenge movie. Well, it's not focused on the revenge so, movie, but ultimately, I like. I think it's just like missing something. I, I think there's like something like very, like just a- absent. Like the passion and like the clear like style in Volume One is just gone in Volume Two. I also don't find the relationship between that Bill and the Bride to be anywhere near as compelling as I think the movie war- like thinks it is. And they have like their final like thirty minute conflict at the end, and I was bored out of my mind. It really just, like, it didn't work. I think it might be my least favorite Tarantino. I haven't seen Death Proof for Jackie Brown yet, but I really wasn't a big fan of Volume 2. Uh, then, Mark, this is on might be on the Criterion channel, but I watched Dead Man, Jim Jarmusch's uh, 1995, like, a neo-Western with Johnny Depp. It's on the oh, Criterion. Yes. It sounds the, familiar. It's in the Criterion collection. Matt, this movie is scored by an improvised guitar riffs from Neil Young. Oh, my God, what? Yeah, it's... <laughs> Fucking insane. Oh, Neil Young, Wait, I'll just look at your letterbox. It's called Dead Man. It's, Dead Man. It's basically, I looked it up. Neil Young like doesn't score movies. But basically, I, I, I was like, why did Neil Young do this? And he just saw it. And he like they gave him the movie without the score and went, create guitar riffs on how, what you think the scene would be like with it. That sounds, oh man, that sounds incredible. It's really, it's really, really interesting to watch Neil Young. Like you just hear like the guitar riff come in. It's kind of badass. This movie's kind of solid. Um... It's. I don't think it's anything like. I gave it four stars, on Letterbox. I don't think it's anything super memorable, but I think it would really benefit on a rewatch, and that's why I kind of rated it so high. Johnny Depp's kind of really great, and he has a really wonderful character arc. And as soon as you kind of understand where things are going, you like. There's a kind of a point that kind of clicks about halfway during the movie where you're like, I see where this is going, and I'm really into it. And you're either you either like that kind of switch or you don't. And that's kind of like, that's kind of all I want to say. Because Matt, I really, I think you would really dig this movie. Considering you're a massive Neil Young fan. I then watched Michael Mann's The Insider. Uh, Boom, which is, skip. Yeah, yeah, skip. It's 157 minutes long. Skip. It's about 20 minutes too long. That's all I want to say. Um, it's pretty It's pretty solid though. Um, I watched then a 1973 Clint Eastwood directed Western called High Plains Drifter. I never heard of this. I love Clint Eastwood. So Matt. In the first five minutes of the movie, Clint Eastwood murders three people and rapes a girl. Um, and if you kind of think about it, <coughs> oh, sorry, in like the 1970s when Clint Eastwood was the most famous star in Hollywood and he had this like bad boy image to kind of like go out there and he's like an agent of chaos in this movie, Matt. It's absurd. You would really dig this movie. He just, he goes. Would you watch it on? I just streamed it. I got it on Amazon or something like that. But basically, he just goes in and he causes, he's an agent of chaos. And it entirely is like a like acts to make things worse, and it's kind of wonderful. It takes very heavy inspiration from Sergio Leone, um, with like the lighting and the music and the style, the like how the camera moves throughout scenes. Leone, so like Leone, what I say? Leone, Leone. Oops, sorry, Leone. Um, so if you're a fan of like his uh, Man with No Name trilogy, you probably dig this one. Um, Wait, how'd you even hear from this movie? <laughs> I looked up because I wanted to prep for a Western video. So I was looking at Litterbox list of like Westerns and this one came up and I was like, fuck it. Why not? It's like an hour 40. So, uh, Mark, we talked about this already. I watched 12 Angry Men. Matt, have you seen this movie? No. This might be one of the best movies I've ever seen. I'm not going to lie. Um, Out there with Black Hat? Out there with Black Hat. No, this is like, this is like another animal. Like this, I, I have legitimately like, it's... It's hard for me to be like swept away by a movie and kind of like time has no meaning and all of a sudden it's over and I just kind of like like come back in. I'm like, what happened? Yeah, 12 Angry Men will do that to you. I don't want to say anything or ruin anything for you, Matt, because I think this is something you really should experience. Um, yeah, this is one of the best scripts. Some of just the best directing, acting. It's incredible. Everything about it's incredible. Go watch 12 Angry Men. Uh, and then... Final movie. I watched this as a double feature with Black Cat for a Hacker Night. I watched Live Free or Die Hard. Have you guys seen this movie? Yep. I've not seen a single Die Hard movie. Matt, do you like Live Free or Die Hard? It's all right. It's not as good as you may think. Oh, man. I remember yeah. liking it when I was younger. So that's the thing is I watched Die Hard 3 in August and was like, I put at the end of my review, I'm like, Die Hard, Live Free or Die Hard gets a bad rap. I think it's pretty solid. It's been a while since I've seen it. 
it's really dull. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's just kind of like you look at it and you're like, this movie looks terrible. Like, it's fun to watch John McClane ride a semi truck and explode and beat a fighter jet. It's kind of cool to watch that, but it's just like it lacks all the passion and like all the heart of the previous like three movies. And he's too much of a superhero. And it's too like Timothy Oliphant is just like this like genius hacker guy. It's just absurd. It's just lifeless. Like, I was kind of like zoning out after a little bit. And I kind of got like the Man of Steel like headache, like violence. It's kind of like, ugh, this is dumb. So I watched seven movies. That was all my movies. Uh, if I were to recommend anyone specifically, I'd recommend go watch Black Hat again. So, you know. Not 12 Angry Men. <laughs> Not 12 Angry Men. Go watch Black Hat. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Does anyone have any final words, any final indictments of me, mm. my character? I think, I think the proof is in the pudding. That's a terrible I agree with Matt, what are you gonna watch tonight besides The Hobbit? Are you gonna? Um, I'm so I'm still rewatching Penny Dreadful, so maybe I'll throw an episode of Penny Dreadful after. Awesome. I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna. I think I might rewatch Hell or High Water tonight. <laughs> well, no one asked. <laughs> I really lost all faith. Mark, Can what I... are you watching tonight? I'm probably gonna watch Andre Tarkovsky's The Sacrifice again. Cool. Cool. I can't, I'm gonna watch Hell or High Water maybe as well. Yeah, it's it's a great good. movie. It's a great movie. All right, guys. I'm sorry to disappoint you for a week, but I'm actually not. Fuck you guys. This movie's great. <laughs> Black Cat's awesome. Matt, uh, wait, no, what are we doing next week? Uh, Matt, is it your uh, wait, is your recommendation for and you're doing Dunkirk or Christopher yeah, Nolan? Yeah, we're doing Christopher Nolan Dunkirk. Oh my god, another phenomenal movie recommended by Tyler. <laughs> Mark likes Dunkirk. I'm so excited to watch. <laughs> I, I saw Dunkirk in theaters and I walked out and I was like, I should like this movie, but I don't. Oh my god, what the fuck? This is the Maybe I'll have a change of heart. Maybe I'll have a change of heart. Don't, don't want to skip to my movies again? I think we. I think that's okay. I think okay. so. I, I want to watch Lady Vengeance. You know. Yeah, I want to. We gotta, do that. we gotta finish that Vengeance trilogy. Well, don't worry. Here's here. Ready for our next week? It's Dunkirk, Cold War, and then Mank. Oh, I'm excited for Cold War. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I'm, I'm recommending Cold War. So yeah, we're that'll be good. There. That'll be right. a good movie. I'm like Black Hat. Movie. Yes. Okay. Black Hat is an A. I want that. I'm putting it in my favorite movies. I'm putting it in our Hall of Fame. An A for anus. I'm gonna put it in our Hall of Fame. Just throw that out there. You're not. No, I won't. I'm, I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna scrutinize our <laughs> Hall of Fame list every day this week. Twenty four seven hour surveillance. Just constantly refresh. Yeah. <laughs> the bastard didn't put it in yet. I mean, I made a. I made a playlist of the objectively best movie ever. I put Prometheus in there, and then Tyler deleted the playlist. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm gonna deal with this. <laughs> that made me laugh. I was like, nope, we're not doing that. Tyler, ha, no. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna make him. I'm gonna make a list of the objectively best movie. And put Black Hat in there, and our channel's gonna be gone. <laughs> like, yeah. We can't. We can't. We can't risk that. Uh, all right, guys. This has been fun for I'll me. I'll get least. the last word in, so he can feel somewhat vindicated from this episode. He should get something good out of it. All right, guys. Uh, make sure you comment your favorite film fraud. I forgot to say that. Uh, it's clearly not gonna be me anymore. I think I've lost all credibility. Uh, but I hope my. Tell us why you hate Black Hat. No, I. I hope my confidence in why I love Black Hat. Has, has won people over to my side because I still don't have a single vote. <laughs> I, still, I still don't have a single vote. I don't have anyone who says I'm the best. I have no one. Mark's still in the lead, then Matt, and then I'm just over here. So, yeah. Is anyone surprised? No one's surprised. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I'm going to be sick. Um, no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. I get the final word.